My name is Adam Susi. Uh, I'm here to talk about uh, stopping the XML RPC hack. It's a really simple solution, but it's a very serious problem. A little bit about me first. Uh, I'm a developer over at Hiveforge, we're an agency downtown. Small, co small company, but we do a lot of stuff with WordPress, and we're actually in the process of also developing our own CMS, which is really fun. Uh, my primary job is as a front-end web developer. I work mainly on WordPress sites, uh, although I've spent the last month dealing with an ASP site, which any, if any of you developed an ASP, you know I'm really glad to be here <laughs> I miss WordPress. My life's been hell for the last month. Uh, and it was all code made in Visual Studio, so everything was inline styles, absolute position. Oh I, I'm ready to... So, uh, but I also double as a content writer, so. Uh, the XML RPC hack, you may have heard about a month ago, uh, kind of came over and all of a sudden, like on Twitter, 160,000 WordPress sites, all utilized in a denial, dis denial of service hack. It, basically what XML RPC does is it allows WordPress to post on your behalf, which is how it was hijacked. Um, it also allows access to WordPress clients, so um, if you used WordPress.com, you know that they have an app that lets you do all of your blogging from your phone. It all runs through XML RPC. But it, the big thing, and this is where kind of the major security flaw is, it allows for pingbacks and trackbacks. Pingbacks and trackbacks are those annoying spam links that you usually get that are blocked by a kismet and you probably ignore them just because you see them and you go, oh, okay, it's marked as spam, I don't worry about it. That's how your site gets hijacked, is that last bit there. What it does is it uses pingbacks and trackbacks to hijack your site, but you have no idea it's happening because they're not attacking, for the most part, they're not attacking your site. They're just using your site as kind of a, a piggyback to send stuff to a different site. Um, primarily for DDoS attacks, and but the big problem for you is that you can get your domain, and potentially if you're on shared hosting, all of the sites that are on your little server plot all labeled as spammers, and that's actually how we found out about it at our agency. Is we got an, a notification from our host saying, "Hey, you guys are something's going on," because it was all going on that day. Pretty much, first thing it, it was like, "Let's get everything off. We've got to find a way to stop this." Fortunately, the community was already. That's the, well, the great thing about WordPress. The community was already well aware of it at that point, and they were working on the the guys at Override Automatic. Were they figured out? Oh, hey, this is the problem. The immediate, immediate switch was, let's shut down the XLMRPC, but then people realized, wait a minute, everything that uses it is now going to break. So it's, it's been a little bit of a push and pull. The stuff that I've got here is really, if you're not using a, a client or if you're not using the Jetpack pl plugin, these are pretty much the solutions for you because if you, for the most part, you don't need XMLRPC, but if you do, if you do use a service that uses it, um, there are a couple solutions that I'll talk about as well. So there's three main ways to do it. One is to add a filter to your functions.php file. Very simple, it's literally it's one line of code. Or if you are using Jetpack, five lines of code. Uh, you can also prevent it using HD access, which is the preferred way to do it personally, because it stops it before they ever get to even get to your site. The nice thing is, if you're um, hosting a whole bunch of, like let's say you, you run a small company, and you're hosting a whole bunch of different sites, you can put it on the main server, like talk to your hosting provider. You can put it on the main server and it'll block it before it even gets to any of the, the sites that you host. It'll just stop it right there. That's the solution that we actually ended up using over at HiForge and it, it, stop, it stopped our problem in less than 10 minutes. Uh, the other option is to use a plugin, but if any of you know me personally, I'm not a big fan of plugins. I, I, I basically think that plugins are, at least for developers, if you're a web developer and you rely on plugins to do your job, you're not really doing your job. So, so first method, functions.php. Completely disables the it completely disables the, the XML RPC PHP file. It uses it uses a filter, it's only one line of code, and then I've also got a sir. Just one line. Add filter. You don't even have to do an add action or a function or anything like that. It's all, it's basically WordPress already knows the command to do it, and you're just telling it, hey, I know it exists, but I don't want it. 
By the way, all this, uh, the slides and everything will be up on my website after after noon. Actually, I think it's past six thirty, which it is. It's already up there. So, if you are just looking to disable pingbacks, which is the primary problem here, and basically, if you're using Jetpack, that's basically you disable pingbacks and you're good. You're going you're gonna to use this line. It's very similar, but it adds a function to just remove the pingbacks as opposed to completely block XML RPC. Second method in HTTP access, it's one command, it blocks it at the server level, like we talked about, so that way you don't have to worry about, you don't have to worry about it ever actually getting to your actual site. Um, but the nice thing is you can whitelist IP, IPs, so if you do know the IP of whatever service you're using if, and they provide it to you, you can say like, hey, I'm going to block it except for this service. It's, the problem is whitelisting IPs can be a little bit of a pain in the butt. And if you don't know the IP, but you're like, oh, well, I know WordPress.com, I'm trying to connect to it because I'm using Jetpack, you can do this, but it's, it's not very easy. And if you're not a, a hardcore developer, it's really not a lot of fun. So just a couple lines. And then you can see how quickly it'll get complicated. All you do is, if you want to allow it, you just start adding that same line. You need to add another IP, copy it, and change the IP address, and that's it. Using the plugin, um, pretty much if you're not a developer, it's, a, it's perfectly okay. I, I, I don't like plugins, but that's because I'm a developer. Um, if you're not a developer, if you're just a blogger and you want to make sure that you're, prevent, you're preventing this problem, which is a very good idea because they'll still, basically if it's a WordPress site, this is how they use it. Um, plugin's the way to go. Um, better WP security, which is now iTheme security we talked about. I know um, they've just recently updated to make sure that this is included. So they, if you're using that, you're already protected. Um, but the, there are a couple like very basic plugins that pretty much the functions PHP method, all it does is do that and pl uh, throw it in a plugin for you. Uh, the one I've found that has the best reviews is disable XML RPC. And that really was it. I told you it was going to be about 10 minutes. Uh, any questions? What was your website? Uh, pull that up. Right there. That's my website and our agency's website. And big thanks to my sister-in-law, Tina, for helping with all these illustrations. Mm -hmm. So what are the, some of the other features which use XML RPC? Basically, if you, if you rely on it, this method won't really work because it, the, the whole goal is to completely shut down XML RPC. Uh, there aren't a lot of features, like, it would probably be a custom solution as to why you're using it. Um, that would probably, I would really look at why you're using it in the first place and if, and see if there's a better way to protect it. Because um, in that case, you may also want to look into um, probably the HD access version. Because you're, if, you, if you're doing a custom XLM RPC implementation, you obviously know what you're doing. So I, I, that, I'd go with more of the, the HD access route. Would you say that if somebody's using it on their website, chances are the administrator of the website knows that they're using it? It's a good point. Um, is it really, and also I would uh, just look at using just the disabling pingback, pingbacks option in HD access, because really the way that 162, I forget the exact number, 162,000 people sites were, were utilized was through pingbacks. And it's actually gotten to the point where now the community is starting to debate why do we even have this feature anymore? Because 99% of pingbacks and trackbacks are spam. Like, you, if you look at your, um, I mean, personally, I don't have comments enabled on my website, but if you look at uh, the comments section on your site, you'll notice you've got, like, random, like, by Viagra pills, by the, you know, and or there's, like, random sites in languages you don't speak and your website's not even written in. And you're wondering, where the heck is this coming from? It's all from pingbacks and trackbacks because the way to do the way pingbacks and trackbacks work, it's very simple. Somebody goes on their site, posts a link to your site, and if it's set up through WordPress and you you enable pingbacks and trackbacks, all of a sudden, on whatever page that they've linked to, it'll show up as a comment. Hey, this person's linked to your website, and you can't do anything about it. So that's what, um, even if you have com like comments moderated. It'll still set it up so that the the comment might not show up, but it's still utilizing your site to do so. 
and that's how they that's how the DDoS attacks base is you're becoming an unwilling participant in a hack. On the flip side, they can also use that to actually DDoS you. If a site decides like, oh, we're gonna use pingbacks and trackbacks to basically bomb your comments section, you can get a whole bunch of sites and just they will overload your server because all of a sudden, you know, you've got 50,000 comments being thrown at you all at once, it'll take your server down. Because it just won't be able, it won't be able to handle it. And that's the whole point of a DDoS attack. So it leaves you, op leaves you open to being attacked, but it, really the more concerning part for me is the fact that your site can be hijacked and used for nefarious purposes. Without, you won't even know it's happened until it's too late. Any other questions? So for the functions that PHP had, would you recommend going that in with all the other functions or kind of putting it into its own file? So Basically, if you throw it into its own file, you might as well be making a plugin for yourself, um, in my opinion. Uh, I don't know if you necessarily need to go, because it is just one line, um, or if, if you're going to go with the, the blocking. Um, let's go, go back real quick. Look at the actual code here. Like if we're if we're talking about this method, I'd still be be a little bit more comfortable just throwing it in functions.php just because it now if you one of the things we do over at Highforge now, um, especially if we're using if you're using a site that you've already built the um, built out the like somebody else has built out the theme and you've just styled it, one of the things we like to do is we we completely encapsulate everything, which is we put one line in our functions.php file for the theme that links to a separate PHP file, and that's where we put all of our changes. The reason we do that is anytime that theme updates for security, it's gonna wipe everything that you've done. Because you've done, basically, you're, when you install an updated theme, you're installing basically a new theme. So that way, all of our changes are still there, which means we may have, if you put this in functions.php, you hit update, and you forget to put it back, all of a sudden, you're vulnerable. So that's a, that's a very good point, that if you, if you keep everything encapsulated out, you're pretty good shape. So you're talking about just putting that in the functions file of a child thing? It, this, it's the same idea, but what we go a step further and we actually create a separate PHP file, we just call it, um, like we usually call it like Highforge functions, and then we link to, uh, using a PHP include, we link to that at the, in the child's theme file. So that way every time they update and we update the theme, we just go ahead and add that one line in and we're back up and running. All right, thanks for your time. Right on. We're moving at a nice clip here today. I like it. Keeping us on schedule. Uh, like I said, I mean, feel free to take some time to, uh, you know, chat with each other, chat with